I'm Marietta, I'm from the undergraduate program. And our goal was just to create the 17 different types of wallpaper groups. And we really wanted to work on making them look artistic and interesting. Um, yeah, I am Betty and I am a high school teacher in West Los Angeles. And one of the big topics that I do teach to my students is transformations. And when I was at Mr. or Professor Fire's talk last, last week, when he talked about different symmetries and how you can make different wallpapers, and I thought, well, my students always wonder about when are we ever gonna use this symmetry and all these transformations? So I thought it would be really cool to make some beautiful wallpapers and share it with my students. Okay, so like I said, we wanted to make the 17 different types of wallpapers. Uh, the image on the, the left side is um, the different cells for the different types of wallpapers. Um, so that's a super helpful tool when you're trying to identify which wallpaper is which. And then on the other side, we have a flow chart that we found which targets unique features or unique combinations of features of each wallpaper to help you narrow down what wallpaper you're looking at. Because it's pretty easy to go into Symmetry Works and make a picture that looks cool, but it's a lot harder to identify what it is. And you can actually make things that aren't any of the 17 patterns. So the whole goal is how do you identify that and yeah. Okay, so again, these are the 17 cells, just to explain, explain a little bit. Um, the solid black lines just uh, border the cell. They don't tell us anything about the symmetry of the cell, they just make the border. So then the yellow shapes represent rotational symmetry. So yellow diamonds represent two-fold rotational symmetry, triangles three-fold, squares four-fold, and then hexagons six-fold. And then the blue parallel lines, those represent mirror lines. And so the axis at which the image mirrors actually happens right between those two blue lines. And then the green dotted lines ref show glide reflections. So all in all, you have rotational symmetry, mirrors, and glide reflections. And so we're just going to walk through how to start drawing out your fundamental cell. So first rule is that if your pattern has any rotational symmetry, the corners of your cell must appear at the centers where there's the highest rotational symmetry. So for this wallpaper, the highest rotational symmetry we have is threefold symmetry. So I'm going to choose the corners of the cell to appear here. We also have threefold rotational symmetry in the center there. So if we border our cell, that's going to be the outline of our fundamental cell. Next, I think it's easiest to look for reflections because those are pretty easy to pick out. So we have our first one right there. There, there's one that cuts diagonal across the cell and two more. So those are all of our mirrors. Next, we'll look for glide reflections. And so a glide reflection is where you take the image, you flip it across an axis, and then you slide it along that same axis, and then you end up with the same image as you started. And we have lots of glide reflections in this um, particular wallpaper. I think there's eight total. And so I think we've identified all types of symmetry. And then if we check, that looks exactly like a P3M1. And so that type of pattern is a P3M1. And then, so this is the wallpaper, and then on the other side is the picture where the wallpaper came from. Um, and then this, those set of points show uh, the points of the picture that were used to create that wallpaper. And so depending on what type of wallpaper you're trying to create, you'll get a different shape like this. And Frank talked to us a little bit about how he has no way right now of predicting what shape that will take. So he said that's a pretty fun open-ended question that he's going to try to tackle eventually. But so when you're trying to make the particular type of wallpaper we did, you can move around that shape and get different parts of the picture, but you can't really manipulate that shape of points. And so a big question is why? All right, so the next one is um, this pattern. So we're also going to choose a cell unit. So here I draw a square, and we're going to use a flow chart to determine um, which direction to go to. So at the end, we'll determine which symmetry that was. So we're first going to ask, what is the rotational order of this pattern? So rotational order is um, when you choose a corner in how much angle, the smallest angle that you can rotate so that you will come to the exact same image. So if you look at the corner of the square, so we're going to look at these four corners. 
And you can notice that when I rotate that about 90 degree, I will come to the exact same image. Hence, we can determine 360 divided by 90. We'll, um, we can say the rotation order is four. And then we're going to determine, is there any reflection? And as you can see, yes, we can fold it halfway vertically and also horizontally and also diagonally as well. So the next question is, are there mirror lines or the line of reflections? Are they intersecting at 45 degrees? And yes, if you look at those two adjacent lines, you could see that um, they're intersecting at 45 degrees. So that was another yes. And so we can determine that that was a P4M wallpaper. Oh uh, yeah, and those are another um, corners of the pattern that you can rotate about 180 degrees, which is rotation order of two. Um, there are some glide symmetries that I didn't include, um, but there are some glide symmetries as well. So here is P4M, and does anyone want to guess how or which picture I used to create this pattern? It's pretty random, but... <laughs> All right, so remember two days ago, we got a bag of free chips? So I'll, I just used that image uh, when I was here uh, two days ago, and I created a beautiful pattern. So here's another example of P4M. So when I got here, um, I went to a lot of hiking places and I took a lot of pictures of wildflowers. So I took one um, and that became a beautiful wallpaper pattern. Um, there's another one, this is P3M1. And does anyone wanna guess which image I used for this one? Yeah, pretty close. Um, so I went to this cafe in LA and they made some beautiful shaved ice with some flower on it. It's like, why don't I use that? So that's P3M1. Um, and the, um, these are some of the pictures or different wallpapers that I have created. This one is made from some avocado. <laughs> and I think this one is pretty easy to guess. Does anyone want to just take a chance? Yes, that's right. So remember we walked uh, on 4th of July parade, I took a picture that became a pattern. And those two, um, this one and the other one, were from wildflowers during my hike. And this one was also from wildflower. And this one was from Lake Tahoe. Yeah. What? Okay, so real quick, we're actually gonna do a game. So if you guess the image, you can go home with one of our wallpapers. So this one's a pretty tough one, but does anyone have a guess? I'll give you a hint, it's in nature. Yeah. <laughs> it's a tree. Okay, next one, this one's pretty easy. So first one who gets it? Yeah. So if you see my water bottle, and it's a pretty low quality picture, so you can make really cool patterns out of not that great pictures. And then the last one, a little bit trickier. <laughs> no? No? It's a fruit. Grapefruit, yeah. So yeah, we had a lot of fun with this project. Would encourage everyone, download Symmetry Works, play around with it, make some cool patterns. Thanks.